Welcome back to another video from SkiboPartsOnline.com. My name is Ron and today we're going to be taking a look at alternators. Uh, today in the shop we have a Super Air Nautique, a late model uh, wakeboard boat. And during our routine maintenance, uh, changing a pump impeller, we had the, the serpentine belt off. And it's always a good practice to take that alternator pulley and with the belt off, spin this pulley and listen. And if it sounds like a bunch of gravel rolling around inside there, you know those bearings are shot. And that's what we have today. We have an alternator. Uh, the factory original alternator is a 2011 model boat where the bearings are shot. This alternator needs to be replaced. Uh, this is a, uh, a 95 amp alternator uh, rated at its maximum capacity, 95 amp. And we're going to replace this alternator with something that's new and different. Uh, something that's... Uh, hopefully going to improve the, uh, the, the engine life and battery life of this boat. So uh, if you like these videos, remember at the end to uh, subscribe and click the like and all that good stuff. You know what to do on YouTube videos. Uh, we'd appreciate that. And uh, so let's get into this uh, replacement and upgrade and, and try to explain the differences of what we're looking at here. All right, guys, we're going to try to... Uh, show you the or try to see if we can listen to these bearings on this old alternator and see if you can hear them there should be no sound at all when you're spinning this okay guys uh our new alternator has arrived uh, but before I get into that I want to first explain this is not a video on how to change an alternator uh, that's pretty straightforward uh, mechanical stuff. Uh, this is more about why we are upgrading to a more expensive alternator. What are the features? What are the benefits? And why are we doing this? Uh, we know we've got a bad one on this boat. The bearings are shot. But uh, one of the uh, common problems on today's or modern uh, wakeboard boats especially is the electrical loads that the boat has on them. You've got uh, ballast pumps. You've got bigger stereo systems. Of course, we have EFI motors that draw more current. Uh, there are just more pumps. You know, the old ski boats, my old ski boats, got a 35 amp alternator, and that's more than adequate because it's there's nothing to run except a carbureted motor. Uh, these boats have got uh, dual fuel pumps that are running constantly when the engine's running. Um, multiple pumps. Uh, so. The 95 amp alternator that's gone bad on this one, uh, you may think is adequate, but this guy here is already on it, another set of batteries. Uh, why are they? Why do they eat batteries? Why are new boat companies looking at installing these high-powered alternators on on the newest models? Uh, because the 95 amp alternator just isn't enough to keep a dual bank battery system charged uh, under typical operations. Uh, so. Balmar has come out with an alternator that puts out 170 amps. Um, we're going to get that out in a minute and show you the, the, the new one that just came in and compare it to the, to the old one. But you know they flooded me with paperwork and, and why theirs is better. So I'm just going to hit a couple of the, the highlights here. Um, the original alternator will put out between 25 and 30 amps of current, charging current, at idle, at engine idle. Uh, which just isn't enough in many cases today. The Balmar unit puts out, uh, what do my notes say here? Uh, approximately 95 amps of current at engine idle. Uh, that's a lot of power. That's a lot of current. Uh, that will keep up with uh, all of the demands of these modern boats. Uh, so one of the issues, the old alternator, you, you've got batteries that are going into deeper cycles of discharge and then having to charge up and then discharge and quite often the batteries are in a constant state of discharge more than charge. Um, so guys are finding, hey, my engine won't crank. Well, they've been discharging their batteries. Uh, the, the alternator couldn't keep up with it. Uh, so this is a, uh, a method that should correct all of these issues. You'll have plenty of charging power to keep these batteries uh, at, at full charge, uh, longer battery life, uh, should not have to change batteries as often because of the, the, the smaller alternators. Uh, so that's why we are upgrading uh, for, for uh, the battery life, 
uh, keeping it fully charged and keeping this boat on the water and keeping the, the whole electrical system happy. Uh, does it cost more? Yes, it does. Uh, like everything else, uh, you get what you pay for. Uh, in, in most cases, you're going to find it's roughly twice as much as the factory type alternator. It's also putting out twice as much power and it should save you from having to buy batteries every other year. So th those are some of the pluses. And of course, you know, little things like yeah, it's American made. It's got a two year warranty. Uh, these are all neat things. So you know, there's lots of paperwork here, lots of charts, lots of graphs. You know, they, you know, the, the comparing the, the, the stock alternator with the, their alternator, which are all great things. But the bottom line is this thing's a beast. Uh, it's going to put out some current. Wait till you see the, 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 the cable that we have to run with this alternator. So uh, I think it's time to get the new one out. So let me go put this paperwork away and let's compare and look at the new alternator. Okay, it's Christmas in the shop. We've got this uh, fancy alternator and the very first thing I noticed was the packaging. Uh, this box came inside of another box, but we've got nice uh, foam packaging and uh, to protect this, every, alt every other alternator I've had come in the shop was in a plain uh, box and uh, so I'm impressed with the packaging. Uh, next thing, it's pretty red. I mean, uh, I mean, how, uh, how pretty can an alternator be actually, no matter what color it is. But uh, so we're going to take a quick comparison, uh, set these guys side by side. And the first thing I had done was go ahead and check the pulleys. Pulleys are the same diameters, uh, serpentine belt, that's a direct match. Of course, this one spins nice and quiet, uh, would expect that. The uh, OEM alternator has a single ear uh, with a threaded hole for your bolt to attach. This one has uh, multiple holes. Of course, we have the hole that's threaded where we need it. I'm sure that's for other applications. Uh, the opposite side is a, a two inch foot on the old and we have a two inch foot on the new one with a, uh, a machine sleeve that could be removed if it only needed the one inch mount. So they got some versatility there. That's cool. Um, wiring is the next thing we want to look at. The old one has a, uh, a four pin plug of which we're only using two of the, the pins for. The, uh, the new Balmar has a uh, a short adapter that goes to the matching plug just like we need with the two pins and I'm sure this is for multiple applications so that's cool so we have some versatility uh, with this alternator. Uh, the next thing that I noticed that was uh, substantial is the stud where we we're going to attach the uh, battery charging cable uh, it's substantially heavier duty it has a uh, well, it looks like a 9 16 boss on here where you can actually put a backing wrench to, to tighten this, make sure it's good and tight. The factory one doesn't have that. So, so that's cool. So we're going to get this one out of the way. The, uh, the next thing is very critical and uh, is a must. This is a must. The original alternator, I'm going to set this down, I don't want to drop this guy, um, came with this charging cable. This went from the, the alternator to the battery post on the starter. Uh, this cable here looks to be a uh, looks like a number six wire, relatively small. It does have a 100 amp built-in one-time fuse, which is not serviceable. Uh, but this goes from the alternator to the uh, starter post or, or battery cable at the starter post. You cannot reuse this. This must be changed. You cannot push. 170 amps through this little wire uh, and expect it to hold up without causing a lot of smoke or worse. Uh, so when you've got this 170 amp alternator which puts out remember 95 amps at idle uh, maximum capacity at idle you need to have your cable. So we're going to sell this with a replacement charging cable. Um, this is huge. If you look at the difference, and I, I think the camera is going to pick up this difference here. Uh, this is number two charging cable versus number six, and it's it's massive. Uh, I hope the camera can can, can see the difference there, but it's it's a big difference. Um, the opposite end, the end that goes to the starter, has a uh, 250 amp fuse in line. Uh, and this one actually is uh, repairable or replaceable if you had to replace it. So 
the cable must be changed. That's critical. So um, I think that covers the new alternator. Uh, we're going to go ahead and install this and then we'll show you the installation when it's completed. Um, but uh, uh, this is the new Balmar alternator. Uh, it's, it's pretty. Okay, again, this is not a how to install video, but this is the new XT alternator uh, as installed on this PCM engine. Well, someday somebody will show me how to do a proper screenshot, but this is my laptop inside the boat. Uh, I wanted to kind of prove to myself and also uh, uh, share with you, uh, this is an actual readout of the uh, operating hours on this particular engine. And the top line indicates the uh, hours at the idle range, uh, 600 RPM range. Uh, this boat has just over 100 hours. It's only at 247 hours total. So you can see that the majority of the time is spent at idle, and that's why uh, charging current at idle is so important. <clears throat> what we're going to do here now is try to demonstrate the uh, performance of this new Balmar XT alternator and to do that we need to try to put a load on it and measure the amperage that it's putting out so here is battery one in this boat the large clamps are part of the uh, the load cell that we're going to put a load on the battery uh, this device here is a shunt that is uh, there for this new Balmar gauge to work. This is going to actually allow us to measure the amperage that the alternator is putting into the battery. So hopefully the camera will catch all these things. This is the the load tester and the small gauge is a uh, Balmar battery condition gauge. Now I'm going to try to scroll through before we start this engine and show you what it's reading. Obviously this is current voltage. Let's see if we can get that there. Press it once, time left. It's showing a 58 there you go. 58 percent state of charge right now on that battery. And right now we're showing that it's actually uh, not discharging or charging. The amperage flow is zero through the shunt right now. Of course, the engine is off. We really have no uh, nothing operating in the boat. So that's the little gauge we're going to show when we start this. Hopefully, I can uh, get the camera angles ready and and working. Now this is actually a little low. This is our test subject. Super Aeronautique with Pleasure Craft engine. We've got our water hose connected to the a little humming noise. So we got water pressure. Next, we're going to test this new XT alternator and see if it does what they advertise. started at 58, now we're at idle at 20, it's charging at 19 and going down. I'm hoping the camera can see this, but I'm going to go ahead and add a load to the battery now. Okay. There's a 100 amp load. That alternator is putting out 84 amps, 97 amps right now. 97 amps. Let me take the load off. The load only wants to... This is a battery testing load, so it's telling me to get off the load here pretty quick. So the load is removed. Right now we're charging at 17 amps. And when I add load to it, we're going to go up to a 100 amp load or maybe a little more and see what it does. Okay, adding load, 50, 
100, 125 amps of load, 150 amps, load, charging at 94, charging at 100. We're charging at 100 amps. Take the load off. Voltage regulator on the XT alternator seems to be working fine. Now we're charging at 18. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, check to see if you can. Oh, there's some cloud cover. Maybe we need some cloud cover to see it better. Let's uh, try to put a towel over us. We're gonna do this again. We've got a towel over here, try to get the sun off of us. Okay, we're charging at 15. Now I'm gonna add a 100 amp load. 100 amp load is introduced. 83 amps charging. 88 amps charging. 92 amps charging. Our load tester says our battery is tested, so we're gonna take the load off. See that this is the load, this is the amount of charge that the alternator is putting back into the battery. So, this, uh, this alternator is definitely packing a punch. Well, that was our sneak peek at the new Balmar XT series alternator designed for the wakeboard ski boat industry. Uh, I was impressed with the performance, um, it's a good looking unit and well made. Um, I, I think you would be impressed with it. We certainly were. So if you like this video, uh, you know what to do. Click the little uh, subscribe button on the, on the screen uh, and like us. Uh, we appreciate that and we'll continue to produce more uh, how-to videos for the ski boat world. Thank you and God bless.